Okay, here is uh, part one of my video on how to uh, read the sun, the moon, and the uh, the stars for keeping time and telling direction and determining uh, t different times in nature, like breeding seasons and things like that for animals. But today, part one is going to go through making a basic sundial using a staff or a stick in this case. Uh, I like a three foot stick. Anything really taller you get too long of a shadow in the morning and in the evening. Um, you can go with two foot. That's fine. But as you can see what I've done here is this morning the the first shadow from the tip of the splitting mall there we'll call it the staff. The tip through shadow. Well there's the tip right now. Okay this morning it was right here on this stake okay I need to put a piece of bark there or something right there like that it was right there so I put a mark there and I put a little stake there okay that represents let's say I use the term loosely 6 a.m. okay I know a lot of Hebrew roots folks use that term for the first when the day begins or whatever for the daytime 6 a.m. okay and then I take and I draw a straight line right to the staff, okay? Right to the staff. And then I take that straight line and I divide it into six equal parts. Now, Yahushua said uh, in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, that he said, do you not know that there are 12 hours or parts in the day? He didn't say in a day, he said in the day, in the daytime. So that's a work day. He said work while it is yet day, because night comes when no man can work. So daytime is a work day. So you divide it into six equal parts, okay? And these divisions, these lines, mark the end and beginning of an hour, okay? So we went from 6 a.m., Okay, or crack of dawn, went through a shadow, to 7, 8, and we're at about 8, 10 right now. 9, which would be considered morning oblations. Okay, 9 a.m., 10, 11, 12 o'clock, noon. And that 12 noon shadow will be right directly that way. 90 degrees off of that line right there. Like that. That also shows you north. Do you see how that works? From the tip of the shadow, no matter where it's at, to the tip of that stake, there's north right there. So, um, it's pretty much true north. It is really, really 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 close it's not perfect the way you do that is at night with again a, a staff like this and maybe a little bit taller one all right in front of it that's in the ground you take uh, we'll go into that later but right now this is just um that's the way you get true north and we'll go through that later but today we're just going to follow the tip this track and we're going to see how this tip of this shadow tracks from the crack of dawn all the way through these hours. How they track all the way on to sundown. Now you notice I've got these marks here. Okay. I've taken and I have taken the distance between the crack of dawn and noon and I have copied it on this side there's a stake down there okay then I'm going to take and divide it into six equal parts so morning sets the standard afternoon follows and copies it so now I have a sundial in the dirt with a stick okay now in the morning the hours go by faster you'll see it the hours go by faster and as it gets to noon the closer it gets to noon, the slower that tip moves. 
okay some hours are shorter than others but it's a part of the day we don't go by man's time you know 60 minutes in an hour that's man's time that's not Yah's time okay so we need to get off of man's time and get back onto God's time if we're going to understand the spiritual side of it. This is the natural side. Wasn't it Paul who said, you know, how is it that first the uh, the uh, spiritual when it should be first the natural and then the spiritual? Unless you understand the natural side of what Yah created and put in place you won't fully understand the spiritual so that's what I'm attempting to do is to get God's people Yah's people back on track with the way he designed things so I'm going to be back but as you can see first of all I put a piece of bark right there piece of bark right there and you can see how the Sun is tracking okay we're gonna follow that throughout the day so I'll be back in a little while and then, of course, at noon, I'm going to show you noon. All right? I'll be back. Okay. Um, as you can see, we are getting closer. Here's where we began this morning. And you can see from here the trail of little pieces of bark that I can... One, two, three, four. And you see the line. Okay? The track of the sun. All right, you see this line here. That's not the track of the sun. That's the first shadow, basically, that the sun cast at the beginning of the morning. That's at crack of dawn. Throughout the day, it alters, okay? Because the track is different than the initial shadow. So, getting a east-west direction toward the middle of the day is very difficult okay now the best way to get a pretty much true east-west okay um, direction is to start in the morning crack of dawn okay crack of dawn go to this is 6 a.m. 7 8 9 9 a.m. is the morning oblations at the morning oblations that line is due east west what appears to be from what I know from getting the readings at night with Polaris which is true north off of true north you get true east west okay and south from what I can see that I this is one thing I didn't see before that I am seeing now okay that 9 a.m. appears to be dead to the rights to true east west I mean I am looking at this right through there and that looks like dead on east west from what I know about Polaris which is up that way okay up in the sky it's there right now I can't see it but it's there it doesn't move it's stationary so 9 a.m. morning oblations that's interesting is you draw a line from the staff of the stake to that point at 9 a.m. and you get true east west I wonder if that is all year long or certain seasons I'm not sure but I don't see why it wouldn't be all year long it seems like that would be a constant it seems like it would be a constant I don't know the only way to know is to in the fall do this again you know but uh, boy that's very interesting but we are getting closer to noon and this is just an update so we are at one two or seven eight nine ten 
we are about a quarter after 10 in the morning okay and um, at noontime we are going to take the noontime reading and then the noontime reading according to mountain time which is where I'm at and you're gonna find a huge difference okay it's a huge difference our regular time is way off it's way off so it, we see the track and we're going to follow it throughout the day okay i'll be back when it's done. okay what we have right now is the sun telling us that it's about 10 5 or 10 minutes after 11 a.m now i just checked internet time and it is exactly uh 11 44 mountain time so you can see how uh, our modern time is way off from Yaw's time clock, okay? This shadow should be right in there. Right there. Right now. But it's not. So you're looking at about almost 45 minutes out of whack man time man's time modern time is out of whack about 45 minutes now it used to be out of whack or a little bit earlier during when summer uh the summer solstice or whatever it was an hour just over an hour off so that just gives you an idea of how far off we are with our modern time and from from yaw's time so I'll be back when it's solar noon and solar noon is going to give us um, true north when the when the uh, shadow is its shortest is at solar noon and that gives us true north so I'll be back okay it is uh, 1 41 in the afternoon which is according to nasa solar noon and as you can see hope you can see the line in the dirt and it's right just right of that line okay now i didn't use a square on this line but what you have to remember is that this line this baseline right here right there is not true north okay it's very close all right but it's not exactly true north true north would be more just like just like that it's really close though okay so you're only talking five minutes ten minutes off very close even at that it doesn't matter because we still divided from beginning to noon six parts or six hours and they're still six parts no matter what now by the time we get to the other end I think what I found is something special with the uh, evening oblations oh, there goes the staff I just stand it back up here in a second but um, with the evening oblations lined up with a line with the morning oblations should hopefully show true north or true east and west and then I can get true north off of that that would be awesome but you notice it started here I hope you can hear me because of the wind it started here this morning and it goes up like that you can see I don't know if you can see that. Let me stand this back up. I have to put a piece of bark. Right there. Where it crossed. Right there. Now if we look across here. You can see we started out with the bark and the bark comes up and makes an arc 
Okay, solar noon is the top of the arc. The shortest shadow of the day is solar noon pointing directly north. And it was further this way just a little while ago. So it's very close. So we'll be able to say, you can see the line going this way. Solar noon is just barely to the right of that, that mark. It's very close. So um, we're going to watch this go all the way down for the afternoon. We started here, and I fully expect that the shadow in the afternoon will end below. Oh, well, you'll see it. I know it does, because I've done it. The shadow will end to the left of the stake on this end. This end is an exact copy of the other side. Okay. So let's see. I fully expect it to, to end at the left of this stake right here. It may not. It may, it may stay over here, but I don't think so. It's going to stay over here. It's different, different times of the seasons. I haven't done it in the summer. I've done it in the winter and fall, but not in the summer, so we'll see. It should end up left of the stake. So that's solar noon. Okay. We've got solar noon, and we're establishing an arc, a trajectory of the sun. Okay, so update coming later on.